So thank you so much for, for having us again. I'm going to be going through um, some key programs that are available on our COVID-19 Interactive Hub. I will go over some of the demographic data from the American Community Survey that's in the COVID-19 Hub. And then um, some of this information that can you know, provide some insight to those who are trying to understand the potential impact of the pandemic on your local community and your residents. We'll review some of the business statistics, the other side of the Census Bureau, the economic information, the employer businesses and other self-employed people that are included uh, on the COVID-19 uh, data hub. And that's uh, via the, the business uh, pulse survey. Also in that portion, I'll you know talk about uh, a couple of the programs that we stood up at the Census Bureau that were specifically designed to collect information about the actual impacts of the pandemic on our households and our people, uh, specifically the Household Pulse Survey. And then we'll look at some of the other innovative tools that can find, you can find on our data site, uh, my Community Explorer and the Opportunity Atlas uh, in particular. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and probably take a quick break and then you know, come back and I'll go over uh, and dive into our live uh, demo. So first, what does the Census Bureau do? You know, we are one of the largest of 17 primary federal government statistical agencies and we are surely best known for the decennial census or the census of population and housing every 10 years. Uh, we, we conduct um, more than 130 other uh, uh, censuses and surveys uh, in between the decennial. Uh, that's important to know. And if any of you have been, you know, going to any of our webinars, and you're definitely aware of that. Uh, the largest one, however, is the American Community Survey. Uh, we have more than uh, 30 other household surveys, and we also conduct more than 60 uh, censuses, uh, economic uh, programs of these economic census, the biggest and most comprehensive. And of course, we serve as the nation's leading provider of quality data uh, about its people and, and economy, and our goal is to provide the best mix of timeliness, relevancy, quality, and the cost for the data that we collect and the services that we provide. So when we begin to look at how do we track trends, uh, how do we look at characteristic data, then more than likely you're going to refer to the American Community Survey because it is the most uh, reliable and accessible data source for your local statistics on critical planning projects such as age, children, veterans, commuting, education, income, and employment. The survey, uh, surveys about 3.5 million households, about 2.5% of the population, uh, and informs um, over 675 billion of federal government spending each year. There's over 40 topics and supports over 300 evidence-based federal government uses, produces 11 billion estimates uh, each year, and you heard that right, 11 billion, so it's definitely huge. We produce three, uh, three releases. There's a one-year estimate, uh, which is for populations or geographies over 65,000. Uh, and then we produce a supplemental estimate for populations or, or geographies over 20,000. And then there's five-year estimates for all other geographic areas and populations. This is the content on the uh, American Community Survey. You know, there's, it's broken into four different domains. Uh, one is social, uh, demographic, economic, and housing, and these all bridge into our demographic profiles. There's a social uh, demographic profile, uh, that's a deep DP02, uh, economic profile DP03, and the housing DP04, and the demographic and housing, which is uh, the DP05. So these are you know, products that you're getting, you know, annually uh, from the American Community Survey, as well as other types of tables, uh, the detailed tables, uh, you know, subject tables. So we, we pull a, a host of data uh, from the American Community Survey. So what are the topics that are contained uh, within uh, the COVID hub? So from the 40 plus topics in the American Community Survey, we initially used incoming COVID-related data requests 
to help determine topics uh, for the hub itself. These included variables on, you know, really vulnerable populations and variables providing a portrait of the current social and economic uh, landscape. These topics were chosen with the idea to provide data to help decision makers focus their response efforts. So on this slide are the topics from the ACS that we actually use in the data hub. As you can see, they cover several areas and are topics that are related to COVID-19. Initially, not all of these topics were part of the hub, but over time with uh, feedback, we added topics that are relevant to the pandemic and the population uh, that are most uh, uh, impacted. Uh, so we see here this population data, households and persons per household, median age. Of course, we're looking at disability, we're looking at broadband use, internet at home. There's uh, the elderly population, 65 and over, uh, vehicles that are available, because of course we need to look at mobility and transportation uh, when there is a disaster or uh, there's, um, um, you know, people need to get to a hospital, to a clinic, all of those important things. And then we looked at health insurance type, you know, language, of course, poverty, uh, their school enrollment, density, and uh, income, and race and Hispanic origin. So these were topics that were included uh, in the COVID hub uh, that are relevant uh, to looking at the community uh, and the impact of something like a, a pandemic uh, on specific uh, population groups. So the COVID hub includes uh, these topics. During this time, the Census Bureau also recognized, you know, this the need to track the impact of the pandemic on small businesses. So they stood up the small um, business pulse survey uh, at the beginning of COVID-19 when we realized, you know, we needed more real time, real near time data. So this survey, uh, the small business pulse survey measures the effect of changing business conditions during the coronavirus pandemic on our nation's small businesses. It has also proven valuable in measuring the impact of other major events, such as hurricanes, on our nation's small businesses. The Small Business Pulse Survey data complements existing U.S. Census Bureau data collections by providing high-frequency detailed information on the changes and challenges small businesses are facing uh, during the corona uh, pandemic. Data is available by sector, NAICS sector, uh, state and for the uh, top 50 um, MSAs. Survey results give local, state, and federal officials essential real-time data to aid in policy and decision making, uh, in addition to information aids businesses in making economic decision and, uh, decisions and assist researchers studying uh, the effects of the uh, pandemic. However, I need to tell you that after uh, two years of data collection, uh, the Small Business Post Survey has come to a close, but the Census Bureau will incorporate the lessons learned throughout the throughout to produce high-frequency, detailed, near real-time business data with the new Business Trends and Outlook Survey (BTOS), and that's going to begin uh, this summer, summer 2022. And to mark the closing of the Small Business Post Survey chapter, there are a series of charts that were created that highlight the three indexes that span the entirety of the survey. Uh, these indexes offer a numeric representation of one or more questions and provide a view into how small businesses weathered uh, the past two years. Uh, so I just want you to know that the Small Business Post Survey interactive app is, is still available. They haven't removed it. Um, however, you're, you're getting, you're getting uh, mainly uh, historical data. The last available one was, I believe, the first week in April. Uh, you're able to look at the uh, Small Business Post Survey uh, interactive tool in terms of data available. So on this one, I'm going to try to move my see what I'm looking at here. Okay. So here's a snapshot of the dashboard uh, that's still on the website that allows users to go in and actually look at some tabulated statistics. This data, as you can see, are shown at the national and state level. There's also um, selected information provided, as I mentioned, by metropolitan area. And these business statistics are tabulated by each sector. Uh, as we see here to my right. 
So on the right hand side of the slide, you can see that certain sectors have been impacted very differently. So this is as of um, January 10th, 2022 to January 16th, 2022. So it's interesting to note that NAICS uh, 61, oh, let's see, the second, let's see, backtrack, the second to the last bar on the right is here, this one here, uh, is for NAICS 72, that's the accommodation and food services sector. This is the sector that we all heard about as being greatly impacted by the pandemic. You can see how much more these businesses have a large negative impact, at least as to of the data uh, at the time of, of this data, which was January. So the uh, accommodations and food services, as we know, you know, took a took a big hit uh, during the pandemic. It's interesting to note also that NAICS Code uh, 61, which is educational services, and NAICS Code 71. Uh, which is the arts and entertainment and recreation sector um, also, you know, we're above uh, the national uh, average. It's also interesting to note that NAICS Code 22, uh, which is the utility sector here, and NAICS 52, uh, which is the finance and insurance sector, have, have seen a much lower impact. I guess we have to be grateful that our local utility companies did not see a market decline, uh, did not see lay, uh, layoffs, and that they are allowed us to have utilities during this during this time uh, period. So this is a, you know a, a snapshot of our dashboard that is available, and you could go ahead and you know click on any state uh, and take a look at you know the impact of um of the pandemic on on each state and is compared uh, to the to this national average of 23.3 uh, percent and there's again there's there's lots there's a weekly comparison there's downloads there's a deep dive into about the data how the data is collected research so this is still um available additionally they have created as i said some indexes and some screenshots of you know, an analysis of the data uh, over that time, that effective time period. So that's, this is the one I would, you know, recommend you, you take a look at. And of course, just look forward for that BTOS survey that's coming that's going to look at business trends because the Census Bureau does recognize the need to have more near time, near real time data. Uh, and that will be a survey uh, that will, you know, continue uh, this one. This one won't, but it'll keep the historical data and then move into this new product. So that's the small business uh, pulse survey. The other survey that was stood up was the household pulse survey. Like the small business pulse survey, it was designed to measure the impact of the pandemic on families, on households, on people in the US. Like the small business pulse survey, they have created a dashboard on their website and you're seeing that dashboard here. One point I want to make, though, is that the Household Pulse Survey and their particular visualizations they've created, you've noticed on the left-hand side of the visualization, there are seven categories, seven different you know, types of questions that are asked here. You know, telework, employment loss, uh, and income, food scarcity, housing insecurity, likelihood of eviction or foreclosure, difficulty paying your for usual household expenses and changes in post-secondary education. Uh, there are a lot more variables. This is really just a, a snapshot of what's available. So when you go on to the Household Pulse Survey site landing page, you will be able to see the data tables uh, in addition to the uh, interactive tool. On February 16th, uh, the Household Pulse Survey is, uh, became a monthly release as current changes in data no longer warranted the bi-weekly data collection. Uh, the Census Bureau uh, you know, wants to, of course, reduce respondent uh, burden. So this phase includes uh, updated uh, vaccination questions that expand response options for the number of doses and brand of COVID-19 vaccine received, it also reinstates uh, questions on unemployment, insurance benefits, and public transit and ride sharing, and continues to ask about the child tax, tax uh, credit, sexual orientation and gender identity, rent, uh, mortgage arrears, 
utility arrears, restrictions, summer catch-up education activities for grades K through 12, and preventative uh, health care for children. So we are now in data collection for phase 3.5 of the Household Pulse Survey, which started on June 1 and is scheduled to continue until August the 8th. So we're in that phase now. So phase 3.5 will continue with the two weeks on and two weeks off collection and dis dissemination approach with data uh, released as scheduled for June 22nd, June, July 20th, and August uh, 17th. Okay, so that is the household uh, pulse survey. So again, um, you're, you're able to look at, um, you know, the, these different factors. You can sort by state. Um, and typically, when you're looking at the metro area, metro area or states, they're, they're actually going to compare in all 50 states, and you would have to, you know, go down and look at your particular state. <clears throat> and then they make the comparison down here in the form of a table, and you filter by states and metro area here. A pretty easy tool. The other interactive tool that I want to talk about now is the Community Resilience Estimates. So this program was designed you know, to measure the potential impacts of the pandemic in terms of the resilience of communities to deal within the impacts uh, or effects that are caused by a pandemic. In developing this program, they identified 11 risk factors that were specifically related to the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that certain characteristics of communities contributed to whether or not they, the community was uh, affected in a greater way or in a lesser way. Communities, for example, which have very high population density, uh, the spread of the virus was much greater uh, in those communities. So the Census Bureau staff applied 11 risk factors to the American Community Survey data, and in the end, created a visualization that shows for each county in the U.S., whether that county is subject to no risk or one to two risks or three risks or more risk factors. Uh, the data in this program are be being released for each, you know, in every uh, county. The Community Resilience Estimates is uh, one of the programs that I talked about that is one of the standard products now um, that, you, that the Census Bureau will continue. And the staff is also looking at how uh, to apply uh, these different risk factors uh, to look at you know, different types of disasters you know, beyond uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So community resilience estimates and you know, we'll go live in uh, when we go to th through the demo part. So the COVID-19 uh, resource page and hub, which contains the community resilience estimates contains a lot of different tools that, that I talked about this morning. Uh, so there's, you know, the, there's the resource page, which we're going to, we'll go through, but of course it's, it's, um, you know, it gives you some, some high level uh, demographics at the national level. Uh, some of those risk factors, you know, the population age 65 years and over, total uninsured, total employer establishments, total non-employer establishments and so forth. And then for each uh, state and county, uh, there is a, a, what we call uh, impact report, uh, which gives you know, some uh, demographic and business data at the state and county levels uh, in an interactive dashboard. Of course, utilizing the county business patterns, uh, the non-employer statistics, as well as American uh, community uh, survey data uh, for the uh, COVID-19 uh, impact report. Well, I moved through this pretty quickly. All right, so on the COVID-19 hub, uh, there's a number of different what they call cards. Uh, so these uh, are really links to the, ex the experimental uh, products surveys, like one is called the business formation statistics, and that's going to also be a program uh, that the Census Bureau looks like they're going to maintain, but that provides, you know, at, timely and high frequency information on new business applications and formations in the in the United States. So that that was a good one to track um, businesses that are applying for licensing uh, and that are forming um, 
you know, and the growth rate of such in, in determining, uh, you know, the impact, uh, the, the viability of that community. Then the small business post survey, you can hit their dashboard here. The weekly household post survey is gonna take you to their website, uh, where again, as I mentioned, you can access their tables as well as go into that interactive tool. Additionally, uh, they have what we call, uh, you know, policy uh, board, policy map, uh, and these provide some high level maps, um, data from the American Community Survey, as well as uh, pulling data from the county business patterns and non-employer statistics at the state and county um, level. And there's you know, eight maps um, that you can peruse uh, and also share uh, with your colleagues. All right, so uh, we'll take a look at that when we, when we go there. Okay, so that's there. Additionally, on the COVID-19 hub, there is you know, what we call highlighted uh, data sets. So called highlighted uh, data sets. And again, uh, these are um, you know, uh, data sets that are actually maps um, you know, that can be shared. Uh, you know, with uh, either upload it into your uh, in, into your own systems. It provides two, um, full access to all our data in the hub. They're, they're downloadable in CVS and Excel files. And then these, that's the word I was looking for, data layers uh, that GIS professionals can use in their own map products. And most of these have been updated for the 2015, 20, um, uh, so 2015, 2019 uh, ACS, I don't still, I don't see the 2016, uh, 2020. So we're still looking at the 2015, 2019. Uh, so, and then there's some categorical uh, data set search. So it's, it's full. I mean, it's, you could spend your whole day, you know, going through uh, this, uh, these particular tools. So we'll, you know, we'll actually go live and, you know, take a look at it. And then there is um, My Community Explorer. To me, it looks very similar to uh, the community resilience estimates and actually houses community resilience estimates. So there's some, some cross-pollination of, of the different tools, but, but this tool is, you know, really wants to help you look at, um, in, you know, inequality, identify underserved communities, and inform database solutions. Uh, you're still looking at you're still looking at, of course, uh, you know, the community resilience estimates that I mentioned that is there, uh, American Community Survey data, the county business patterns, non-employer statistics, uh, very similar uh, content that we're finding on the community resilience estimates page. Uh, and again, but they have this, you know, in your, in your, uh, in, in this particular tool called My Community Explorer. So we just keep, you know, doing better and just making, you know, data more accessible and, and just giving uh, some tools that uh, are relevant, uh, you know, to your research. And here's a screenshot of uh, My Community Explorer dashboard which provides selected demographic business and resilience information to help users identify potentially underserved areas. So the data presented in maps, interactive dashboards and tables. And then we'll go through the uh, opportunity list, which I'm really excited about, uh, where you can look at which neighborhoods in America, you know, offers children the best chance at a better life than their parents. Uh, you can use these new data, uh, to learn exactly where and for whom opportunity has been missing and develop local solutions to help more children uh, rise uh, out of, of poverty. That's Opportunity Atlas and we'll go live for that. And then I just have some screenshots uh, for the rest of the slides. And I actually finished this sooner than I anticipated. So looks like it's only 10 uh, so I think what we are able to do is just go ahead and, uh, you know, go live at this point. Uh, the rest of the slide deck, I just, I just, uh, yeah, please. Oh, we have some questions in the chat. Do you mind if we um, sure. tackle those before? Th yeah, thank you. Into that? Yeah. yeah, all right, okay. Uh, so we've got a few, but I think I can summarize some of them together. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a question about, uh, you had mentioned the business Pulse survey is ending, but uh -huh. there is a new one replacing it. What was the name of the new business survey? Thank you, thank you. Uh, 
Business Trends and Outlook Survey. Business Trends and Outlook Survey. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And then the next question was asking about the Household Pulse Survey. Yeah. Um, and that one, I believe you mentioned, is it potentially ending? Um, and, and if it is, will there, uh, will there be something to replace it? Or will that survey, in fact, continue? I believe the Household Pulse Survey is a survey that, that the Census Bureau is continuing. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then there was another question here about the community resilience estimates. Yeah. Whether there are plans to extend, extend it to sub-county areas, like a census place or a census tract. I, I'm not aware of any expansion uh, at this time. Uh, when we get on to the site, I, I will show you um, where you could contact, I think his name is Mr. Chase. Uh, and, and and see what what they're thinking about uh, in terms of the future uh, for for the product. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. I think that's uh, everything. Every question I see in the Q and A box. But if there are any other lingering questions out there, uh, feel free to type them in, and we'll we'll get them answered. Okay. So let me try to figure out how to. Uh oh. All right. So I'm going to minimize this and get on to www.census.gov. All right. So here's, you know, um, many of you probably have gone uh, to our website. And I just, I have to admit that we, we have created uh, many entrances into um, the, the different data equity tools. For, exa for example, well, I'm going to show you how to get to the COVID hub here uh, by going into browse topic into emergency management. However, I also want to, before we go there, I just want to point out that in surveys and programs in explore data, we also have data equity tools here where you can go into, uh, you know, uh, community resilience estimates, opportunity atlas right here through data equity tools. And let me just point this out, but we won't go in this route, but I just want you to sh want to show you. We have a dedicated site, uh, two tools that are related to data equity. And of course, you know, we're looking at the census business builder, uh, which we've had around for a long time. But if you can look at small businesses, you can look at us, uh, you know, this, um, this annual um, survey of businesses, which has some um, uh, race and ethnicity data, you know, there's um, community resilience estimate is here, okay, um, household post survey, income and poverty interactive tool. So there's some uh, from SAPI, small, small area income and poverty estimates. My community explorers here, you also have a lot of many of you, if you worked on the 2020 census, uh, there's a response outreach mapper tool here. And I believe there was, I, I, they, they might, I'm pretty sure they'll expand it and that will be a tool that will be used for uh, the 2030 census again. Opportunity Atlas is here. So just to say there's many ways that you can go and, and get into uh, the different tools. And they have uh, many American count stories, which are great in terms of how, how the Census Bureau is using uh, data equity. You know, and that's a, a big part of, okay, so hmm, it's not where we want to go. Okay, but there's America Count stories. I saw a few of them earlier where you can actually go and, and find uh, some stories where, where real communities are you know, using the tools uh, for policy and grant making. So just to point out, there's many ways to go here. You can also go into what we call, so the, you know, the household pulse survey, as well as the uh, small business pulse say are what we call experimental data products. And of course, you know, the Census Bureau is recognizing, you know, the need to have more real-time data. Uh, so they, so the experimental products provide, you know, they're, so they're innovative statistical products and they're using new data sources or methodologies that, that benefit data users in absence of other relevant products. So again, you know, we have a need 
uh, the, you know, it's a small business uh, pulse survey. We have a need household pulse survey. So when they, so there's, there's, so it's, it's kind of an interim product. However, they're experimental in nature. So they will tell you, you know, um, you know, what standards are there, uh, the methodology for each experimental uh, data set, it, it has to meet the, the quality standards of the Census Bureau. And then, so sometimes uh, they can, can become, for example, community resilience estimates, uh, they can become permanent um, data sources, uh, data products. And here's, and here's, okay, and here's the business trends and outlook survey, get more information about that. Uh, let's see the business dynamic statistics. Here's the other two that we talked about today, and here's some other ones. So uh, they have various uh, webinars uh, that the Census Bureau will offer uh, over time, and you know that where you're going to be able to then, uh, you know, get some coaching and review some of these data products. So again, I'm going to so experimental data products. I showed you data equity tools. I want to just point out Census Academies. Uh, so that's one of the slides that are on uh, the, the latter part of my slide deck. But here you can look at the different webinars. So I'm going to put this do a highlight here for upcoming webinars since I didn't talk about it. So these are some of the webinars that are coming. Okay. Okay. So and we have you know, we have different uh, presenters. Sometimes it, it it may be one of our our, our partners uh, from uh, a local government. Uh, and then it, or it could be one of our other census divisions, you know, like the ec economic directorate. Uh, so, uh, so again, data.census.gov updates, your community by the numbers, data for community development, you know. So again, I want to just point out, and then how would you sign up for that? Uh, basically, you, you could just, so June 22nd is today, so that's happening already. How about one tomorrow? So basically, you can go and register here, and then now, and then you'll get a link to sign in uh, for the webinar. Typically, that's going to be on WebEx. That's pretty simple. I mean, we have tons of data. Uh, in addition to that, in addition to the, and then you could also request a training right here. Okay, so you could, you know, go ahead and you know, give your contact information, your organization, and one of our many uh, data dissemination specialists will contact you and, uh, you know, and set up a time uh, for uh, that particular webinar. Uh, so they are allowing Census Bureau staff to begin to go out and present uh, now, uh, you know, with a, it has to be a disciplinary need to go. Uh, so, but they are opening the doors for that. And here's some of the content of the courses that we offer. Okay, so this is the census staff can put together for you. So that's how you request a training in one other place. Many of us are busy and we don't have time to sit through a, a full blown webinar. However, every every one of our web, webinars are recorded and it comes with the transcript and it comes you know, with a recorded um, webinar. So you can basically on YouTube. And at that point, you know, you can go in and, you know, review, review a, an hour webinar typically, or you can look at one of our data gems, which are typically, you know, five to seven minutes on different aspects of one of our data products. Okay, so um, anyway, that's, that's something we continue to build on. You're also welcome to make and how to use the data, data um, COVID-19 hub, for example, using um, how to do thematic mapping, Okay, so there's, there's, I mean, there's two pages of them. We continue to add uh, based on the demand. So just to say that these are some resources for you um, that's going to be at your fingertips. All right, so back to census, um, census uh, landing page by clicking on my icon here. So that's how you can request training. So to get into, okay, here we are. Believe it or not, emergency management. My notes here. So on the main page, www.census.gov, you know, we're going to be selected browse by topic, uh, emergency management. So again, uh, you know, the LEDH is another one of our programs, but they have, again, I mean, I, so, you know, NOAA is one of the, the Department of Commerce's divisions, uh, I guess I should say departments, divisions, administrations, right? Uh, so again, we have a lot of their data on here as well. But here's where you could find um, the corona, the um, COVID-19 pandemic 
um, the COVID hub. Okay, so, um, and it's an, it's an ongoing, you know, so of course, you know, what we know what that is. Okay, and then and additionally, I should say, another entrance point, you have your programs, right? Household Pulse Survey, Small Business Pulse Survey, Business Formation Statistics, and um, School Pulse Survey. You can get into My Community Explorer here. And of course, they have on the map for emergency management. Uh, you know, we can go back into data.census.gov. Okay, so there's many entrance points. And then here's, here's here they are. Here's some of the American count stories uh, related to equity, uh, related to disasters. Okay, and there's some visualizations. Okay, so that's right on, that's right into emergency management. But to get into the, the tool, I mean, there's many, you can always, you know, just of course it's bookmark it, but um, so we're gonna go here. Uh, we're going to put it here. So what we see here is what? So this is our resource page. We have a couple of things. Uh, we have, you know, so this is um, actually, uh, you know, last year, uh, COVID-19 uh, Data Hub uh, 2.3 will take us uh, into, you know, providing some updates to what that is. Okay, so it brings us in here. Okay, so you can um, so send you can so what's new? So this brought us right into the into the hub here. So we everyone updates. You know what's changing? What's new? So of course, uh, version two point seven uh, was released on March thirtieth, and so my community dashboard is here. And uh, so this new tool is also featured on Advancing Equity Data Tool Source, which we know, uh, the COVID-19 Surveys and Estimates, so Small Business Pulse Survey, and then the Categorical Data Search, and Demographic and e e Economic Analysis of uh, some of the key um, maps, okay? So that's what's released here. Um, so then uh, frequently asked questions about um, the COVID hub, you can get that information here. It's a nice little uh, PDF, okay, it's one pager, pretty easy. And um, you could also get some video resources. Okay, so again, there's, there's a walkthrough of the hub, other video resources on, so there's a video on using the impact report, policy maps, highlighted data sets, categorical data search, weekly pulse survey, uh, CRE, okay? So there's, and they're short, they tend to be like seven minutes long. So there's some video resources if you just need a refresher, quick walkthrough. Going back to the hub, US Census Bureau COVID-19 hub, okay. And all right, so just wanted to point out here. You know, so again, advancing data equity tools. So again, some of those same tools we saw on the data equity page, you're gonna find here. Uh, additional federal data sets that's located on down on this page. COVID-19 surveys and estimates, demographic and economic analysis, highlighted data sets and, and categorical um, data sets. So now what we see here is, of course, this was new. Um, you can click on what's new uh, with, the, with, with the new uh, vintage or version of the uh, COVID-19 hub. You can sign up here to get connected, get feedback. Uh, there's My Community Explorer. You can go right into My Community Explorer. Uh, we're going to be able to quickly, as, as I mentioned, uh, just see links uh, to some, you know, key uh, statistics about the population. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, uh, the population age 65 and older, the total uninsured pop, total employer establishments, and total non-employer establishments. It's going to tell you the source. Of course, we're still pulling from the 2015-2019. And county business patterns, the latest one is 2019. Uh, non-employer stats, 2018. These are annual uh, surveys. You can go right into your COVID-19 hub here or open it into a, um, uh, into, into an, into a new tab. And you can watch a video about the, the, you know, the 
the tool and the pet report and how to how to go through it. Here are here are the uh, COVID nineteen surveys and estimates. These were the cards that I mentioned, uh, where you can then begin to you can just ac access um, the different uh, survey, you know, weekly business formation, weekly small business pulse survey, uh, community uh, international. Um, so again, I, I can just before I, I I guess I can just jump into here and get back to it. Have a little time. So it needs to populate. Okay. All right. So, this is at the national level. This actually screen looks a little different from the one I had showed you earlier. All right, where's my date? Okay. So this one is um, it's not it's not it's the, the the latest time frame is week sixty eight that was March 14, 2022. Uh, we went to so I, I I must admit my friends uh, this one is a little different uh, screen uh, than I looked at earlier, um, which is interesting. Uh, let's see. All right. We'll go back to uh, the other one and then let me just see what I have here. Small weekly. So this dashboard takes you there. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll go back to that. Um, um, all right. So here you can go into the community resilience estimate. Um, the uh, household pulse survey is here. So let's see if that word that's going to take us should take us to the home page. Okay, all right. So this is familiar. Um, okay, again, where it tells you what the data collection phase is. Here you can access uh, the data tables. Uh, you can access public use files, and then you can access the interactive tool. You can take a look at what what is um, because the questions are being you know, updated, you know, based on need, uh, you can find, see the, the latest uh, pulse survey questionnaire here. And um, so again, the, the different partnerships we have with uh, the different agencies and then when data was available uh, for each, uh, each particular um, phase. Okay, and you can explore more. Here's the technical documentation, a link to the experimental data products page, some research and some presentations that have been given not that many on there, but there are a few. Here you can move to your interactive tool. Okay. All right. So again, you can choose your, so, so it's, it's going to default, it's always going to be food scarcity. Uh, you can filter by states. Of course, we're going to go ahead and choose Washington. Okay highlight Washington. So food scarcity in week um, 45, that means 7.3% of the population uh, experience food um, scarcity. You can compare that with other places, other states. Um, so here, uh, United States average is 11.2. So you're below the, the average here. Uh, and Washington of course, this correlates with that is 7.3. And again, on the bottom, so this is of total food scarcity. An interesting one, I had a reporter call me and see if I could find it. Um, she was wanting to look at, not, 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 for, not for Washington, it's actually San Francisco. How many people were feeling like they were going to be evicted or their home was going to be foreclosed on? Let's see if I can get that. Okay. Now, where does that number change? Okay, so we, um, so in these areas, uh, so here, 34.3% um, felt like on week 45 um, felt 
uh, that you know there's likelihood of eviction or foreclosure. And you compare that with other states. It looks like North Dakota is the highest. Average in the U.S. is 38.3, so you're, you're a little below the national average. Okay. Hawaii has a low number. Okay, and um, so that's one of the ways you could see. So again, in Washington, the measured universe is 251,000, so 86,000 people. There's a huge margin of error, 34.3%, uh, and then margin of error, 3.2. Excuse me, 12.3 off of the 34.3. That's your range. Uh, okay, so, and it tells you, you know, and there's some inf information on household pollster, but so there's other measures you could look at. So, likelihood of eviction, um, you know, housing insecurity, unable to pay the energy bill. So, so I don't know, you know depending on you know, what kind of programs you guys have set up to help, um, you know, your residents, you know, with. Um, uh, you know, with the pandemic here, you can kind of scope out, you know, what, what's what's uh, some of the uh, the population that are, are looking at being impacted uh, in week 45. Okay, week 45, they give me a date here. Week 45 is April 27th to May um, 9th. Okay, so that's the household pulse survey. Looks like we'll, we'll have some updated data coming soon, but week 45 is the latest data that's available. Okay, so household post survey, um, you could, uh, you know, um, you could email, you can, you can submit feedback if, you, if there's, you know, something else you think you need. Um, you know, the, what's good about it is it, you know, they are, they do pay attention, it's small staff. Uh, so, you know, they are making updates all the time based on need. Okay. Uh, anything else on here? Okay, so that's, um, and then the metro areas, there's only one, you know, so again, for you all. And this is going to compare, you know, Washington. Uh, where, where are we at? Where are you guys at here? Seattle. Okay, thirty-six point four uh, for the metro area. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and because uh, that's the household pulse survey, um, back to um, the COVID hub. And okay, so we did the household pulse survey. And then there's um, just to point out uh, on the hub, there's, um, you know, that's the, this is the, the demographic and uh, economic analysis. Again, there's, you know, different maps. So they're going to, this one is from the county business pa um, pattern. This is data on employ employer businesses from county business patterns. So this, so that's one map. And you basically, you can just, you know, you get, you get just relates to the um, average annual payroll per employee. And so the size of the circle relates to the, the pop, you know, the, the number of total establishments. Uh, and then basically you, you just really just get uh, a total. There were 195,105 total business establishments here in 2019 with, you know, 2.8 million employees. Average payroll was 66,000. For details on, see the attribute table. And then the other, and then there's others. So there's, you know, um, two is uh, non-employer stats, accommodation and food services, since that is an industry that's been impacted and a uh, person of uh, households with less than 75,000 of income and percent of people below poverty. So these are some, some of the same variables that you're gonna find on you know, the impact report. And um, it, again, 65 and older population. Okay. okay. So 1 million. Um, people age four, 65 and older, which is 15.5% of the population uh, in the state of Washington. Okay, state level data. Okay, so those, so that's a little bit. That's so that's one of the tools. And again, you could um, you can copy the link and you know share it uh, with you know a, a uh, staff member. Okay, and then other one that we have the highlighted data sets. Uh, for example, if you wanted to get um, you know. Again, we're still looking at the 2015, 2019, but these are the maps. It should take me to a map, right? Let's see. Okay. 
Okay, so this is a layer that contains a 2015-2019 release of the ACS about population and age or five year estimates shown by state and county. So again, you could open in Map View or Classic, open in Scene View or open in Arc, a GIS as a, des a desktop. And these are the, it's gonna to allude to the uh, to table um, and is downloaded from our census API. Uh, so again, for, for those that are, you know, that, that need the GIS uh, capacity and, and want to wanna to use the, uh, the layers, you can find all the different layers from this data set here uh, in that mapping tool. Okay, so these are what are available for you. There's uh, six of them, okay? We have two, two, three related to business and uh, one related to poverty and one related to um, broadband, broadband subscription in 65 and over. And here you can have access to um, other data sets. So that's just a preview of uh, everything that is here uh, on the tool additional federal agency and other data sets. Okay, so um, I just, it's uh, again, Census Bureau doing a really super great job of partnering, you know, with other federal agencies and uh, national companies. Uh, and so these are uh, shareable uh, data sets uh, that you have access to as well. Okay, so for those that are doing, you know, that deep dive into research, that's all here. Uh, so it is really a, a wonderful tool, you know, to have available, uh, you know, at your fingers. Let's see if I can get back to where I'm looking here. <laughs> okay. Here's my COVID-19 hub. All right. Okay. Okay. Get back here. Hey, Leah, we have a yeah. couple of questions. Sure. Thank chat. you. Um, yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. You just mentioned the API, and there is a question kind of similar, yeah. <laughs> at least related. Yeah. Um, so Bryce says uh, this may be too technical for this discussion, but mm -hmm. they're asking if the old coded headers are still available. So, for example, um, a data set now the headers have been reduced to like a, a string of numbers and letters, uh, and it used to be written out. In, in, in English, uh, occupied housing units estimate, et cetera. Ah, uh, let's see. I think if, um, if you would send me an email, uh, let, let me check um, with the API team. Okay, because I know, um, you know, again, um, on the API, typically, you know, you're going to get the download is a, a JSON file, right? Um, so in terms of, uh, so just send me an email and let me get you the correct answer, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, what is available and how to access it. Let's do that. You know, my email is elaine.leah.bowden at census.gov. elaine.leah.bowden at census.gov. And please send it before next Friday because I'm going to retire next week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. please send it yeah. give this week. I have plenty of time. Okay, right. But you know, I'll just I'll research that and get that out to you. Make sure one of my colleagues handles it. But I have some time to do that. Okay. And I'm happy to add in to that. Um, please. I use the API please. a lot. Please so go know. ahead. Perfect. Um, Bryce, if you're using the API, um, you can pull all variables. So there's a variable label. And so if you pull that up, you can then join it to basically that um, now unique ID. So your example, S2501 underscore CO1 underscore 001E, there's a corresponding file for every data set in the API that you can pull up the labels that go with it. And then you can just join it on there. And then you'll get that occupied housing units estimate, occupied housing unit stuff, all those labels will come come for you. So it's, it's really handy and it's, it's available for all data sets that exist um, in the API. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Greg. I think, yeah, spoken from someone that's actually using the API. Uh, okay, um, so let's see. We're now at just about 1030. Do we need to take a break before I go ahead and move into uh, this uh, community resilience estimates, my community explore and opportunity atlas. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe I could, I'm going to finish this in half an hour. Um, but your, your call, Carol. 
Um, thanks, Leah. I, I I think this might be a nice opportunity to just give everybody a, a, a quick uh, five minute break, um, time to just sort of uh, take our eyes off the screen and um, and and get sort of re-energized. Um, I do believe that there may be one additional question uh, or or two that was um, uh, logged in through the Q and A. So maybe we can answer that, and then we will take the five minute break and and regroup. Sounds great. Awesome. The uh, the remaining question is asking about the benefit of using experimental data. Um, and then whether that data is valid to use in a comp plan or equity reports, et cetera. And just to clarify, Leah, I think yeah. that, that uh, the question may be referring back to your description of the various, um, you know, sort of uh, data sets produced through the American Community Survey. So there's mm -hmm. the one-year estimates, the one-year supplemental estimates, and the five-year estimates. Um, and I think the question uh, is probably related to just the statistical reliability of the supplemental estimates. I'm just thinking of how, you know, one of our statisticians would, would answer that question. Uh, you know, again, um, whenever we develop these um, experimental products, you know, we are going to provide you, you know, with the, you know, the methodology, uh, you know, the margin of error, um, you know, so again, it's, it's a dance between, you know, having some data available and the reliability of the data, but, but so that all will be provided to you, you know, as an end user. Uh, and of course, you know, they're saying they always are seeking your feedback on the usability of these experimental products because they are, are attempting to, number one, meet the demand of having more near real-time data. Uh, but, you know, again, you know, the, it has to meet the, the quality standards. Okay, so, if it, so, it, so it, it does say that some of their products, um, that's a caution right on the experimental data products page that uh, data may not meet all of our quality standards. So we, they, we clearly identify that they are experimental data products and we include that methodology in supporting research with their release. But by all means, you know, once you, and once you want, once you decide that you want to go ahead and use one of those tools, you are more than um, uh, you, should, you should definitely could reach out, you know, to um, the team um, this, uh, that are that are actually working uh, with that particular uh, survey and get any additional feedback, uh, so you can feel comfortable or and and they will give you the pros and cons. Uh, their their staff are real good at doing that. Uh, so that but that's that's the caution uh, on it. Uh, you know, again. Once it does meet the quality standards, you know, like the community resilience estimates, then it does become a permanent product, okay, a, a standard Census Bureau product. Before that, um, they are cautioning that they are experimental. And with that, you know, you got to use caution. Thank you, Leah. And um, the, the participant just sort of uh, chimed in to clarify that she was referring to the page, um, you know, sort of covering a, a number and a variety of new sort of experiment, experimental yeah. data. But I think that your reply um, pretty much answers uh, uh, what the question was. And it's great to know that there are um, staff available from the Census Bureau to help users, you know, sort of navigate the pros and cons um, of using a particular data resource for, you know, um, for, for a specific application. So thanks for that. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I think now looks uh, looks like a great uh, opportunity to take a pause. Um, it is 1034. So why don't we plan to regroup um, and allow Leah to uh, continue with her live demo um, back at 1040. Thanks, everyone.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I see we're at 1040. Um, whenever uh, uh, Leah is ready, we will sort of will resume the, the, the demo of all those fantastic um, uh, Census Bureau resources. And I will also add that the questions that we've been receiving through the Q&A box are fantastic. Keep them coming. Uh, as you might have heard Leah refer to during, um, you know, her her conversations, um, she is on the cusp of retirement. So both um, a congratulations to Leah um, and also just, you know, uh, a, an opportunity to answer questions uh, or to pose your questions um, to Leah, who has been with the Bureau for many, many years is in, and is knowledgeable about a range of subjects. So Leah, whenever you're ready, take it away. All right, so let's see. I guess I have to share screen again. All right, let's go. Welcome back, everyone. Let's see. So I'm back here. Perfect. Um, I did. Uh, so uh, there, there is another access point uh, to uh, the. I mean, I can see here. What's new? COVID hub. So how do I push this up here? Okay. Anyway, um, there is another access point to the small uh, to the, to the um, small business um, pulse survey uh, that I found with the screen that I was looking for. If I have time, I'm, I'll go back to it, but it really was that the screenshot that I demoed in my slide deck. That's the one that I was looking at. Uh, I'm not, I, 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 the other one, I'm not sure uh, what that is. I mean, is on here, but I, again, I was looking at something different. So if I have time to, to get back to that, I'll, I'll try to do that. But let me try to go through these next three because I don't want to keep you guys too long. Okay, so again, I just want you to know they move things around quite a bit. Um, I So really, uh, to get to my, to, I'm going to go with the, my, the community resilience estimates, move into my community explorer and then in with uh, opportunity uh, atlas and with time permitting this this point you to where uh the, the small business post survey uh data is um okay that has uh you know a little more current data up until uh april of 2022 okay so community resilience estimates we're going to go here you know to the dashboard here So this program, you know, provides an easily understood metric for how at risk uh, every neighborhood is in the United States uh, to the impact of disasters, including the COVID-19. Uh, model estimates are based on 11 resilience related risk factors. Uh, current estimates are modeled uh, using the 2019 American Community Survey data and displays the number and percentages of residents living with zero, one to two, or three or more uh, risk factors uh, for the nation, states, counties, and when you zoom in, um, you can look at uh, census tracts. So you could, you know, access the community resilience estimates interactive tool uh, in in the card. You can actually just type in community resilience estimates. It's on the data equity page too. Many many places to access the data. So, but in addition to providing an easily uh, understood metric of social vulnerability, the Community Resilience Estimates Program uh, provides daily users with the information they need to make informed decisions. The 2019 Community Resilience Estimates Equity Supplement adds to the discussion by, of equity by pairing data from the 2019 Community Resilience Estimates and the 2015-2019 American Community Survey, providing the user with the most up-to-date information on social vulnerability and equity uh, in uh, one source. So here um, you can see, and this is uh, you know your your basic uh, landing page. Uh, you could see, you know, here we have an interactive map. It's always going to default to the national. You know, uh, you can. Um, you know, there's a risk factor uh, dashboards where it's which is color coded. So the percent of the population, uh, you know, that have either um, zero, one to two or three risk factors. The default is three risk factors here. You can see that to my right. Uh, and so, again, the areas with the darker uh, orange uh, have a uh, higher percent of their population, um, you know, that's impacted. By um, by the COVID uh, 
okay, uh, and have, have risk factors. They have the higher number of risk factors. So here, you can see here, the census tract here. This is Ferry County, excuse me, not a census tract, County, Ferry County, Washington, small population, 7,603. So you could see uh, here, you know, 31.1% of the population uh, has um, three or more risk factors. Okay, and estimated percentage of the population is not statistically different from the national average. And that's one thing, you know, you consider. Uh, and then they're going to break it down. Uh, they're going to compare um, the the, the um, actual uh, uh, population um, by race or Hispanic origin uh, with the national average. So you can you can see that here. Uh, so it's either higher or lower. Um, and um, you know, so because population that is not Hispanic or Latino, so the white alone population, it's higher than the national average uh, in Ferry County. Uh, and then, you know, so, um, and then if it's not statistically different, you know, from, um, from the national. So you see they're lower than national or not statistically different. So that's how you're, you're comparing uh, your, your particular ge geography of interest, you know, with the national average. So that's, it. So that's one way you can quickly go. Um, if you, you want to go ahead and then sort for a state, um, you can go ahead and Again, start start with the states. It has a drop down box here. You have to go ahead and you know we're going to go for, to Washington. And um, so I'm going to close this out here. Okay, and there's two pages on on each each box. So that's good to look at some race data specifically the pop the the, the actual detail of that population group, uh, and basically. Um, for um, by county. So we're in Washington. Uh, so again, we're now we're looking at, you know, this Washington level data. So again, we, we already saw that when we zoomed in, you know, this very county. So the counties that are impact that have the higher risk factors are these two, right? So every, every time you, you click on it, you can get the data. So Garfield, Washington and Ferry, Washington have um, thematic risk factors. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, okay. That is not statistically different. Um, but higher than the rest of um, uh, the Washington state counties. Uh, you can also, you know, go ahead and do a sort for county. Uh, so here uh, you can, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, King County. King County. Okay, so King County here. So King County, so same thing, you can get your, uh, the data. So um, residents with, um, percent of residents with three risk factors is 15.36. Okay, and uh, again, if you look at uh, some topical areas by race and ethnicity, uh, okay, so the race and ethnicity, male, female, uh, percent 18 years and over, uh, Gini index of income inequality, median age, uh, disability, it's lower than national average, household with the female household or no spouse present. Okay, so you get lower, lower. Okay, so again, just comparing that. Um, so, so, you know, the variables that are higher than the national average, you know, those are something, you know, to consider. Um, okay, so again, um, you know, basically you got your thematic map. Um, you can sort by counties. I guess you can, you can, add, you can add a few counties too here. Um, let's see if I add... add. If I can add that. Okay, so that's going to move into Snowmesh, right? Okay, um, let's go Snowmesh. Some data there. Okay, fourteen point six zero six percent. Okay, and then again, look at that average. All right, so you can look at your thematic map. You're going to get some some data over here to your right. Again, looking at those key variables. Um, you know, pop households below the poverty level, households without a vehicle. Uh, how do you get? How do you get away from a disaster? How do you, um, you know, get to the doctor? Is there is there appropriate, you know, um, adequate public transportation? Okay, uh, households with, uh, that are 65 and living older and living alone. So again, that's the shut-in population, population that may need assistance, you know, maybe mobility issues, households with disability, female householder, uh, no spouse, and some other factors here. So it's just key facts you're always going to get at the top. Um, you're going to get um, then the race and ethnicity. 
and your uh, so health insurance. Again, it's a population with no health insurance, uh, age 35 to 44. It's almost 55%. Okay, and um, let's see, then age and sex. It's the different age groups, uh, language. Some data on language spoken, and it's going to be just broken down into these four, these major groupings again. English only, Spanish, Asian Pacific Islander language, so you don't have the specific language, uh, other Indo-European, other languages. Okay, so you have a sense of language. So then the predominant risk factor, uh, so again, es es estimated population with three uh, risk factors, you don't have a lot of that. So really estimated population with one or two risk factors you're looking at, so they're going to give you um, you know, predominant risk factors uh, by percent. Uh, for uh, for your county in Snohomish County, Pierce County. Okay, so you can do that for each county. It doesn't have to be in your box. Then uh, there's the thematic risk with the impact with the, on the population. So again, and then, so population two million. Okay. Again, so the, the darker the color, the lighter the color, so more like, you know, 14, per, less than 14 percent, 14 percent. The bubble represents, what, 35,000? A circle, okay? The flag uh, variable risk factor, so areas that, um, to, to flag because they're, they're statistically higher uh, than the national average. It's a risk factor different from the national average. And you're also getting that, of course, in that drop down box uh, with your key statistics. You can move into your COVID 19 impact uh, report here. It's a little hard uh, to navigate here. Okay, so I'm going to jump out of here, uh, especially for me, because I just can't see when I can't see all uh, the screen. Uh, so I'm going to go back. So anyway, th that's your community resilience estimate. Uh, let's see. I was trying to look at anything else. Okay, here, over here. Here, this is what I want. Okay, so right in the left-hand corner, you're going to pull, you know, this, uh, this little um, dial here and uh, pull out to get some additional notes. All right, so it's going to tell you what the gazillion community resilience estimates is. Uh, it talks about their 2019 supplement, which adds to the discussion of equity by pairing the 2019 uh, community resilience estimates and 2015-2019 ACS. Uh, the end product is a data set which provides the latest information on social vulnerability and equity uh, in one source. Uh, the CRE uh, data set provides information about states, counties, census tracts, census tracts if you if you just drill down when you once you once you get once you zoom in, you know, you're able to get more census tract data, right? Here we go. Okay. Um, let's see the individual and household characteristics were, were modeled in combination with data from the population estimates to create um, the community resilience estimates. And here, let me see if I can zoom get down here a little bit. Uh, all right. Okay. So risk factors. So here, here are so someone of you be asking. So what are the risk factors? So again, you know, zero or one to two or more than three. So it's either it's one of one or more of these uh, factors here. Here. Okay. Uh, and initial release date. They're going to give you that. And here, and it's this is the web service. So again, this is I, be, I believe access to those um, those map layers. And here, R. Chase Sawyer. Okay, I had the chase right. R. Chase Sawyer. Uh, so um, I think small estimates household survey, sehsd.cre at census.gov. So he's the point person on the CRE uh, estimate. So any, any um, additional questions, you know, you're able to uh, go ahead and ask him. So, so this is good. This is a good pullout, a good file. You know, what are the estimates? short of having to look at the uh, the technical documentation and can close that. Um, so again, I'm going to go back. So that's the, that's the community resilience estimates. And uh, so let's go back to the COVID hub. And um, okay, so here's the impact report. So the impact report is pretty good. Uh, a lot of the same data. I mean, you can uh, download a PDF of um, the statistics. And it's a nice um, look at the state and or county. 
uh, is going to default uh, to New York. I don't know why. Um, so again, we're going to go ahead and put in Washington. Washington, this is the last thing I'll show you. Real quickly, we'll walk through this. And um, so again, you can scroll through all your different counties too, if you want to do it that way or pick your county here. Okay, so um, if I wanted to, you know, just quickly go to, uh, let's see what I'm going to here. King County. All right, so again, you're going to get some, you know, key statistics about the population. You can filter. Um, there's the key facts, okay, average household size, uh, internet at home, median age, data um, from about businesses that those same um, key, st key stats, total employers, establishments from the county business patterns uh, and uh, total annual uh, payroll, the poverty data, that how much of your population is at risk, uh, occupation by sex. So if you look here at food, um, food preparation, uh, we can see number of males, number of females. You can explore for more data. Uh, and it's actually going to show, um, you know, all the different occupations and the total um, by sex. And let's see page two. Let's see, we can move on to page two. Okay, then page two, the language again, uh, and Hispanic origin and race, population and poverty status. And then you're going to get those, uh, those poverty uh, ratios here, the poverty levels, other populations, uh, school enrollment. A population with no health insurance and then you can just go ahead and you know upload it uh it, it really is just an image uh, with the header okay create the image uh, in a png file all right so that's the impact report um i think it's just one at a time i don't believe you can print you know multiple ones you have to you know actually go here and you know do one and print it print it out all right so that's the impact report now let's go ahead and move uh you can you can you can go and view it here. It's just really hard to navigate uh, the tool. So now let's go to uh, my community exp uh, explorer. So again, they're going to give you um, selected demographic and business and resilience information to help you identify uh, potentially underserved uh, areas of their state, counties, and communities. It features the um, the American Community Survey data and uh, the American and the uh, community resilience estimates that, that modeled um, estimates of uh, the county business patterns, not employer stats as one interactive tool. So you can open the dashboard here. And um, so this is one of our newer ones. I'm thinking maybe it's like three months old. Um, it's quite surprising. Uh, but again, we have our our, our our data uh, visualization staff working on these all the time. And um, so what's different here? Okay, it's while well, it's populating. And let's see, let it go ahead and populate, still loading. Yeah, it's coming. So it's going to give you your uh, your your sources: American Community Survey, County Business Patterns, what year, not employer stats, um, and it's also going to give you the Community Resilience Estimate, the um, the 2019 Equity Supplement, uh, the predominant risk factor group. Uh, let's see, and again, so population below poverty. We see the areas in darker purple would be the ones that you have. Um, uh, higher numbers, 30 to 100 uh, percent, predominant risk factor in counties. You're seeing that here in this map, estimated population with three or more risk factors. So you're seeing kind of a comparison uh, with the ACS data, with the community resilience estimates. So they're putting it side by side. Uh, that might be an advantage over the, the community resilience estimates that you're able to see um, you know, ACS and, and the business data with the community resilience estimates. So we're going to, let's go ahead and let's try to see if I can pick a county here. Let's look at Washington. Oops, I can spell it. Okay, Washington. 
Okay, you can select the county to so stay on Washington for now. Okay, but you are able to, to state or in county, and you're also also able to use these tools to actually you know gather more counties. Use the rectangle to you know if you want to get you know your a Puget Sound regional area, um, you're able to get that um, using the three counties by, by using the using the rectangle or circle or lasso tool. Okay, um, let's see. So we're looking at Washington. So they're going to they're going to give you those profiles. Okay, so again, they're going to pull the economic profile. Yeah, we're really slow today. I'm not sure what's happening here. Maybe I got too many things open. Hmm. Okay. All right, it's still it's still populating. So it will give you again. It's going to pull from, you know, the again the American Community Survey. Uh, again, the income to poverty ratio, population without um, health insurance. Okay, and let's see if I can get a county in here. So, county, this is pick, uh, let me try to get one. Let's see. Snowmish. Okay, we got a county. All right. Okay. So now it's starting to pop. It's a little slow. It's probably a little, it's usually it was a little quicker yesterday, but again, you're gonna, it's gonna populate with this data. Um, again, you know, and so you're going to get the data here in, in an actual chart. Uh huh. You can go ahead and share it. You know, if you wanted to share it with someone, you could share the link or in any of these, uh, you know, the embedded QR code, email it, Facebook, Twitter. Okay. You're able to do that. It's shareable. And uh, again, uh, again, below poverty level, you're able to see the tracks here by using your legend. So if you look at your areas here, you can probably zoom in, get more information. Um, social characteristics, hope it doesn't take any longer. So it's just, it's just loaded now, okay? Language spoken at home, okay? Um, households without a vehicle, race and ethnicity data, and then you're going to get your, um, your county business patterns. And of course, um, so so this particular tool, you know, gives you the data, which is you can share it. Uh, going to again, very similar to some of the the demographic and economic profile. You're going to be able to get that here um, with uh, a total number of establishments. Again, county business patterns, non-employer statistics. Go back to thematic maps. Pull this out. Again, um, you're able to see a little more data as you zoom in. So again, the census tracks, okay? You get your census tract data uh, as you move in, as you zoom in, right? And then you, could, you can see the percentage of people um, by poverty. And then this one relates to the predominant risk factor. So, you know, um, so this is another tool. It also alludes here on what table, DPO2, DPO4, uh, the B, our B table, our detailed tables. Um, so those were the data sets. If you wanted to get the margins of error, um, you'd be able to find that. Uh, so again, um, and if you go here, explore CRE equity supplement, it's, it's going to actually take you to their homepage uh, where they give a little bit more about the methodology here. Okay, so um, pretty, pretty nice tool uh, to look at your community comparing uh, the um, American Community Survey, um, kind of the CRE. Uh, and then with the community resilience at that, so that product with the actual e equity supplement and then to, to establish predominant risk factor uh, group. Okay. Okay, so good. Um, and other one is I wanted to look at the Opportunity Atlas. The Opportunity Atlas, believe it or not, is not here. Okay, you can't find the Opportunity Atlas here. So I'm going to figure out how do I get here? And here, okay, okay. Okay, Opportunity Atlas. So I'm gonna go to census.gov. So I'm having a little hard time seeing my screen here, okay. Okay, so Opportunity Atlas. Opportunity Atlas I mentioned is on the data equity tools. Let's go there. You can also type in 
opportunity atlas here, that would work too. Okay, sometimes you might need to do that because they move things around all the time. Opportunity Atlas. Okay, this one I love. I really, I mean, I just, just am getting into it. So what, um, get my notes here. Okay, so, you know, again, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a program, you know, that uh, the Census Bureau is working with, I think it was, uh, you know, um, down here somewhere. So, educational institutions, okay, some consultants. And so, and it answers to questions about uh, anonymous data following 20 million Americans from childhood to their mid 30s. So, you can trace the roots of today's affluence and poverty back uh, to the neighborhood uh, that um, someone grew up in. All right. Uh, and um, so again, and it helps you um, as a planner to develop some localized uh, solutions. Okay, so we can say begin exploring. Uh, and there is, you know, some tools for you. So again, you know, where, so you can search for a city or an address of a region. You know, you want to select uh, what is the particular outcome you would like to, to map. And then you could choose a demographic group uh, to work on. Okay, here. Uh, so you can click on the different icons. So here again, um, I'm going to just move forward. All right. So again, so it just defaults to San Francisco. I'm not sure why it defaults to San Francisco, although I, I did, I was born there. Uh, I, but I wanted to just point out, just take the time I shared, um, you know, with Carol and, and Eric and Christian uh, that you can explore stories. And uh, what I what I was happy to see. And going through this, you know, actually Seattle, uh, reducing barriers to for families seeking to move to opportunity in the Seattle metro area. So um, this is a nice um, map, uh, a, a visual map of what they did uh, to actually, you know, find uh, what they were looking for. So in the Seattle metro area, local officials are piloting the Creating Moves uh, to Opportunity initiative, Creating Moves to Opportunity. Uh, initiative. This new effort builds on research showing how children's life chances can be shaped by neighborhoods they grew up in. Okay, so the goal uh, is to help housing choice voucher holders move to higher opportunity neighborhoods as defined by metrics for upward mobility, similar to what you're seeing here. Okay, so again, um, you know, one of the one of the variables is, you know, household income at age 35 based on um, what neighborhoods you grew up in. And so it's neighborhood characteristics, uh, job growth. So again, um, and then in this case, they're looking at uh, low income and uh, let's see, uh, race group uh, and gender. Okay, so you could see, um, you know, the areas with the, the darker orange are uh, lower uh, income. Okay, so if you grew up in this neighborhood, the chances of you getting um, I mean, your, your incomes are going to be, I think you can click on it. Okay, so that's, so that's, in, in looking at a map, you can determine what neighborhoods uh, actually have an, uh, not income outcomes that are not less than desirable, let's just say it that way. With overall mobility in King County is relatively high, many voucher holders uh, currently live in neighborhoods similar to the highlighted area in the central district. This area has a relatively low rate of upward mobility despite being more expensive than many surrounding neighborhoods. So in response, researchers and policymakers work together to identify opportunity bargain areas like the shoreline community up here. These areas offer high rates of upward mobility for kids from low-income families while remaining as affordable for voucher holders as their current neighborhoods. So we can find opportunity bargains more easily by clicking on the um, the bars icon in the top le left to switch to advanced mode and filtering the data to show tracks that have relatively low rates. So you did that. Okay. So again, here we filter to display only areas with both high rates of upward mobility and below or near average rents. Uh, in the CMTL uh, pilot project, local officials combine such estimates with other historic and contemporary neighborhood data to find places to suggest to low-income families with vouchers, potentially providing pathways to opportunity for many children in the next generation. So again, they were looking at Shoreline, Washington, here, low track number here. Uh, so income is a little higher, it was 37, right? We were looking at that average. 
uh, in the first slide. Um, so 37 is, is a little higher. Okay, and incarceration rate is a little lower, only 1.4%. So that's one of the factors you can look at, median rent. Uh, and you gave us the median rent, uh, taking from the ACS and job growth. Okay, and you can download this image, download the data, overlay your data uh, with, with some of your own tools. So that's pretty cool. And um, so again, I mean, this is, um, and there's other stories about how others used it. So you can now explore your neighborhood, takes us back home. Um, so, you know, for example, I can just type in a, a, an address. If I can, so one address I wanted to explore was 1809 down, yeah, 7th Avenue. Okay. Okay, so here we are. So, okay, so, you know, 26, very low income is only 20. So if I grew up here, uh, my average income, median health income would be about 26,000. Uh, and then again, this is for low, this is for all. Now, how about if I was, um, if I was black? Okay, what kind of uh, impact that would have? Um, you can also look at what? Another factor I could look at would be see all the factors. So you can explore graduation rate. You can explore other tools. How about incarceration rate? So again, 16. So based on what community you grew up in, your chances of, of incarcerate, incarceration rate for the area is higher. Okay, the dark red. Okay, so that's so it's really um, fascinating. It's, it's a nice so how you know so childhood outcomes. So looking at strategies to minimize that and to improve the quality of life for the future. Um, anyway, that so I would I would highly recommend you exploring that tool. You can type in different addresses and take a look at that census tract, compare it to others, and look at some of the other um, factors that are there. Okay, so at the, I'm gonna close with that. Um, is are there any questions that I could take at this time? Yeah, there are a few that okay. came. Um, so Caitlin is asking about. Let's see, are there any upcoming updates to the Opportunity Portal? Um, they're seeing data references for yeah. uh, from 2013 for job growth and 2016 for uh, median rent, for example. I don't know. Uh, so that that would be a question. You would have to go into the site and, and ask the developers of the of the um, of the tool. I don't know. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, a couple other questions asking very similar mm -hmm. updates. So sounds like a great place to to go mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions out there? I'm I'm happy to happy to relay them to Leah. Okay, so some frequently asked questions. Here's the Opportunity Insights Group. Okay, it's so a team here. Join our team. Yeah, based at Harvard University, our team of researchers and policy analysis work together to analyze new data. Okay, do you have any contact info? You know, courses you can take, policy initiatives, data, and then research. Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay, I'm, but I would, you know, Mapping with data is a good way to have a visual on what is occurring on the ground. Uh, you can always, of course, compare some of that data. I mean, I don't think we have that particular mashup. And this is a good mashup with some other variables we won't have in, uh, uh, in our purview, but uh, it's a good, good place to start. Uh, anything else I can answer for you before I turn it over? I don't see any other questions in the Q&A. But thank you. Thank you. And then you guys just remember that you can always, um, you know, again, just always know that from current slide, you can always just go and um, let me get to the end here. Additional, there's some additional data resources. So here, these are direct links uh, to um, all of our, uh, some of the data, my Census Explorer, Census Business Builder, you know, SAP, Household Pulse Survey. Um, and, and then again, you could always reach out to our data team uh, and ask for specific, uh, ask specific questions. They can either set you up with the data dissemination specialist to work, walk you through your particular question or just answer, answer your email. I do that all the time. Again, I, I pointed you to the academy. I pointed you to the free data training. 
uh, America Counts, uh, Director's Blog is a good way to keep up on what's happening, stay connected with us. And again, you, you know, in the future, you want to go to census.asdata, census.gov, or call this number. Okay, and staff will be happy to uh, work with you. Okay, at this point, then I'm going to go ahead and, you know, turn it over uh, to the Puget Sound Regional Council team and specifically to get moving on the next phase. All right, thank you. Leah, just uh, before we wrap up your segment, um, thank you so much. You presented so much, um, just a wealth of information and resources today. Um, there is so much stuff. Uh, we, we were talking um, in advance of the webinar today, um, just uh, about the Census Bureau's, um, you know, sort of uh, focus on taking all of its data resources and developing a number of tool, online tools, interactive um, dashboards and resources um, in a way that really makes the data more accessible um, to, to data users. Um, I love how in a, a number of these cases, you're sort of pulling data, not just from a single Census Bureau program, but multiple ones, um, you know, sort of grouping them and framing them with a particular lens, whether it be, you know, sort of um, community resilience in the face of, uh, of the pandemic, um, you know, sort of opportunity uh, and, and equity. And I just, um, I'm hoping that our, our participants are walking away with, you know, a number of uh, newly discovered resources that they can leverage in their planning work. So thank you so much. You're welcome. All it's right. My pleasure. And I will turn things over at this point to Craig Hellman, who is going to walk um, you all through um, a new PSRC data dashboard resource called Community Profiles. Thanks, Carol. Um, so as Carol mentioned, I'm Craig Hellman. I'm the director of data here at PSRC. And I think it's good to follow Leah here because I'm basically going to show yet another way to get at census data specific to our Puget Sound region. Um, and I think maybe everyone would share this. Um, there's a ton of census data out there. And my biggest struggle is trying to figure out what census data I want and need to use and where I can find it. Census has a ton of great tools. It's nice to see all these visualizations. Um, I'm gonna start sharing my screen so you can kind of see one. I thought it was interesting that um, all the ones that we were seeing were mainly from ARC Online. I was noticing they they're definitely have a, a focus on an Esri tool. I'm gonna to show you one that was actually built with some other um, tools to get at it. And so it's, it's using these data profiles. So I won't bother putting this into presentation mode. Can everyone see? The, the presentation here as my screen is shared now. Carol, can you see it? You're the only yeah, one I can, can see. So yeah, perfect. Yeah, and you're good. All right. So the community profiles were built from the census data profile. So those DP, DP02, 3, 4, and 5. So data profiles, I find them really useful. They have, um, if you've never used them before, they basically have really frequently requested social, economic, housing, and demographic data, these very specific profiles. Um, and they're broken up in those and they're specific for geographic areas. You get lots of great information in one place and then you can always go get a detailed table if you want to use that. Um, so I built a tool using R and Shiny. Um, Shiny is a, a, the web app version to, to basically build a package to build web apps with R. Um, but I used it to build some information generally off of these data profiles with a couple of exceptions where I wanted some detailed table stuff. It's all using ACS five-year data. And the reason I'm doing that is I wanted something for every community in our region. And so the only way you can get at that is to use five-year data. And so the tool actually allows you to select two non-overlapping census years so that you can compare your data if you like. Um, that bottom bullet there, this app was built using a combination of Python and R um, to basically download, process, and visualize all the data. All the code's actually available on our GitHub page if you really want to start your own site using this code and you know R and Python, feel free to fork the code. I have the GitHub page there and you can make your own um, community profile. And I have it on the, the right side there and said, you know, you know, try the app yourself. That's actually a live link that you can access. I just ask that maybe you do it after we're done here. Um, so the working view, all right. So what do I wanna, how do I wanna change that, Kristen? Let's see. Oh, actually, I wanna get out of this one anyway. Um, can everyone see my um, web browser now? Just Chrome. 
Okay. So if you want to access these data profiles right now, they're on our website. You can download them, you can follow this link, and you can come get our ACS data. And you can get all these data profiles for cities, counties, our MSAs. We have two MSAs, the Seattle MSA and the Bremerton MSA, as well as all our um, census designated places. Um, so this has been here for actually quite a long time. Neil used to keep these up here. Um, Eric does it now as well. And you could click these, you know, get an Excel file. I can click it and you can kind of see what this Excel file looks like. It's just one Excel file with basically there's that DP2, 3, 4, and 5 here. This has all that information for whatever place that happened to be. So it's a really great resource um, to get information. But what I wanted to do was make a visual way for you to be able to get at this information. So I built a tool called Community Profiles. And the idea is to basically select your place and your kind of ACS here, and you can get a whole bunch of information based on it. I'll just go ahead and I'll pick, say, Auburn as an example. You pick the city of Auburn, you'll get some basic statistics that come from the ACS for the Auburn, population of about 81,000 people. And I have some high level statistics here. And you saw some of these things on some of those pages Leo was showing us. Um, you know, average household size, median income, unemployment rate, home ownership. Um, I've aggregated up total people of color as an example. And there's a couple other little things that, that are down here that are more PSRC specific what the regional geography of that city happens to be, as well as whether it's an airport, airport affected community or not. And as I mentioned, right now I've got the five year 2020 data. So the non overlapping one is the five year 2015 data. So you click that and you can kind of see these high level stats that exist there as well. You can go to any city in our region. You can also go to our counties. So have it split up. So let's say if we wanted to see what Kitsap County is like, you can see those same kind of high level statistics. But then what I wanted to provide the information for is if you go into the kind of, and you can see the icons down here and it's kind of describing in general what those icons are. So let's look at some people ones. I took some high level ones, age, race and ethnicity, health coverage and people with disabilities. So on this page, and they're all gonna look the same, you basically have a chart of some sort showing what the, what the place is compared to the region and then a map. And so this is a census tract map based on that same data. So in this case, on the age one, it's showing you the median age. You can interact with the map, you can zoom in or out to, to go along with it. And you can see what the average age is by census tract and those geographies. And then you have the detailed table information below here that also includes the margins there. So you can also see those on here and wanted to make it to where you could always see how things in this place compare to the region. Um, so that was, you know, Kitsap County, if I come to King County and you'll see, and it takes a sec to reload, but if you're at the county, you'll get a census tract map for the entire county. Um, if we want to pick another place, you know, I go ahead and say, let's take Bainbridge Island as an example. You can see now Bainbridge Island, there's much, a lot fewer census tracts kind of zooms in and you can just go through and explore all the different things that happen to, to take place here. So you can see as an example, and in this case, being Bainbridge Island and these census tracts, you can see in general, people with health insurance or without health insurance. So in the region as a whole, about 10% of our region doesn't have health insurance or didn't in 2015. Let me go back to the 2021. And you can see how that changed. Now it's about 6%. You can see what the region is compared to say the place you're in. So in this case, Bainbridge Island, you can see how much different it might be compared to the region. Um, and I won't go through every single one of these. Um, you can kind of see, maybe I'll click them at high level so you can kind of see some of the high level stuff I did. And I like to just randomly pick the cities. I'm not trying to give you, make you dizzy by clicking around all these, but just give you an idea um, of the different places you can click. Everything is generally using, this is all doing spatial stuff on the fly. And so the census tracts or anything that intersect with the, the boundary that you happen to be in. And so this case, and see the city of Kenmore is going to grab census tracts that just happen to touch the boundary, but it gives you a, an idea of what's going on around you. And you can then see in this case, this is housing units by type. And so you can see a lot of housing units by type in Kenmore, 65% of them are single family detached housing that compares to a region average of about 59%. Um, home value is always an interesting one. If you look at a place like maybe say Kirkland, you can see as it kind of goes there, you can see where based on the colors, the highest, you know, here, you know, this is what the points communities where the median value of a home is over $2 million, according to census data. And you can see maybe some more of the affordable places.
places. Home ownership was another one I have in here. Um, and then there's some stuff on travel. So you can look at mode share to work. This is where I was going to share the example of there's a couple of these travel time to work and departure time to work. I wanted more detail than was available in that data profile. So this is actually from a detailed table. So this is B8302, I believe. And to work, it's B8303. I may have had those two backwards, but um, point is you can kind of go, you can flip through here, you can see stuff. You want to see where the zero car households are by an example. You can see, once again, kind of the overall average, but you can see where there's higher shares of zero car households, in this case, in the city of Kirkland. Um, and then the last bit of it, which is actually non-census related, the only non-census related stuff here is this wrench. If you go ahead and click the wrench, this ties to the Puget Sound Regional Council's work on our projects, whether it's the Transportation Improvement Program or our Long Range Transportation Plan, the Regional Transportation Plan. Whatever jurisdictions you happen to be clicked on, I can pick another one. Let's take Port Orchard. You can see- Craig, Craig, sorry to interrupt, but while you're waiting for that to load, um, I'm wondering if you might be able to drop a link to the community profiles in the chat box for folks to, um, to follow. Sure, um, I will do that. Let me go here. Let me just copy this. Um, I would suggest you don't do it while I'm clicking it. Um, we'll probably all, who knows if we'll overload it, but I'm happy to put it in the, the chat box if I can actually find the chat box, Carol. Um, I'll put it in there here in a second. Um, sorry, I was like, I'm on two screens. I somehow cannot find the chat box now um, for this. There it would be. It should be at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Everyone should be able to see now my screen as I try to paste this in here because I got it on the screen. Can, so I will paste it in here and hopefully get it to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. And if nothing else gives you a thing to click, and I will tell my PSRC colleagues, do not click that link. That link only works outside our firewall. If you click it inside the firewall, you'll get a nice warning that um, the link doesn't work. So that only applies um, to, to UPSRC folks. I can give you the link for internal use as well if you want to click through it. Um, so this was just to show you, you can kind of see then these are the projects that are currently in the city, the tip for the city of Port Orchard. Once again, it's any project that intersects that boundary. So you can get a good example and you can hover on the map and you can see here's a Kids App Transit project as an example that kind of intersects with that. Um, if you want the information in a, a form to where you can do other things you want, um, you've got this thing where it's download data profile. So if I go ahead and click that, it'll download it. You can click it open. And now you'll see this is the data for 2020. It'll tell you the data year. This was when it was pulled from the API. Um, and this is specific to the geography. It gives you the notes that go along with those different things. And in this, it's got all the details for data profile two, three, four, five, and then also those two detail tables. So this is 8302 is the um, detail table for travel time departure. And this 8303 is average travel time to work. So for every um, place, as well as every county in our region, you can get all the same information, pull it up, do whatever you like to do with it. We wanted to make this available, um, especially with all your comp plan updates that are going. I wanted to make it easy for you all to be able to find information um, specific to your um, jurisdictions. But the idea of what made it into the data page was really just what I thought people might be most interested in. It's only a, a small little sample of all the different things that you could actually find in these wonderful data resources the census provides. Um, so with that, I'm happy. I see there are some questions. I can stop sharing the screen here. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, Craig, there are a couple um comments about having some difficulty getting access to the community profiles um we are happy to work on that and send the link out <laughs> um, oh, once, once that's remedied yeah that's interesting i'm surprised uh so yeah caitlin we'll double check why it doesn't seem to be um loading for you because it should work so um and we'll we'll send the link back out if it does uh, let you know maybe i happen to have done something to have taken the page down while i'm um, doing this that's the problem with live demos. Um, you demo things to before you know it. It doesn't work for people. Well, we will certainly follow up with um, a working link uh, to everyone who, um, who attended today. 
Are there any additional questions uh, for either Craig or Leah at this point? Feel welcome to type those into the Q&A box. All right, Craig, it looks like um, Diana is wondering if you might be contemplating providing the uh, community profiles uh, data and maps at the track level. We could definitely provide you the tract information. Um, just make sure you use it at your own risk um, would be my only comment. Um, the data is definitely available there. Um, so maybe the, the question I would have for you is, would you prefer, like when you do that data download, would you like it just to add the details for the tracts that were selected for that jurisdiction you're in? Or do you just want a, an ability to download the data for all census tracts in the region? Um, did that make any sense? Um, this is weird going through the Q&A, so now i got to let the, the person chat there. I'm happy to, there, there's multiple ways we could get you the track level information. Um, but like I said, just be careful how you use it um, because you know that once you get down to the track level data, especially um, with some of this information, it, the margins of errors will be quite high, so. All right. Well, thank you, Craig. And um, again, thank you to Leah. Um, really uh, just so glad to have you all join us today. I hope there um, that you all sort of absorbed a lot of useful information um, to take back uh, to your work um, and workplaces. Um, I, a lot of you are, are either already working on or about to launch uh, your uh, local comprehensive plan updates and all of this demographic um, you know, information is just um, so key to be able to, to you know, being able to um, provide an accurate profile of your, you know, of your current communities, trend, you know, useful trends and, um, uh, and just, you know, this data informs so much of what we do as local planners. So, I hope this as well as the earlier workshop on June 8th has been a helpful resource. Please continue to think of PSRC uh, staff as ongoing resources as you sort of engage in your work. If you should have any questions about the data, uh, resources and tools presented here today, um, you know, feel welcome to reach out to us as well as to some of the resources that Leah pointed you to. Um, and we hope to continue being able to, you know, bring workshops to you on a regular annual basis. So please keep your eye out for future announcements. Um, the materials from today's webinar will, as I, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, be, uh, they've been recorded and the recordings as well as the presentations will be posted on our website. Um, and we will let all the participants know when those resources are able, uh, ready for you to access. So um, if you feel like you've missed anything, you should be able to go right back to the materials, download links and, um, and contact information and, and whatnot. So that is all for today. Thank you so much again for joining us. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.